So this is a little project uh, that I did some time ago and it's called uh, Raspberry Pot Pie Omeric. Kind of rhymes on Popeye, Pot Pie, you know, kind of a pun there. So, um, so what this does is actually controls a cooker that you see here. Typical uh, roaster oven that is not a very smart as you can see here by the dial. And uh, the Raspberry Pi is controlling it, so let's look a Let's take a look a little bit at it. So the first thing obviously you see here, Raspberry Pi with some cooling fins on and some wireless networking. Powered by a USB hub here. And then we have the GPIO port, which you can control pretty much everything with the Raspberry Pi. And a Pi cobbler which is really nice and then you just basically put this on here and you have all the pinouts here you know this is nice and you see here so what I'm doing here is basically I have a temperature probe I can show this here quick oh this is really hot this is like right now whoa <laughs> see that that's the temperature probe and down there is a silicone bag with the food and it's been cooking three hours so far. And uh, I'm just gonna take it out in a second. So basically Raspberry Pi measures the temperature. See here, cable here goes down here. And uh, it's very simple. It's like a temperature sensor that works over one wire. So it only has three connections. Uh, well, uh, 5 volts or 3 volts ground and then the data cable so it's really nice and the Raspberry Pi can actually speak that language you can speak one wire so it's really kind of really cool then the Raspberry Pi senses the temperature and if it's below or above dependingly it will go and switch this relay which we have here and this relay basically takes this um, that's why the cooker is control the connected and just goes here plugged in and then just one one of the cables is interrupted and wired into the relay so it's really nice um, works really well it's really cheap too so this is like five bucks here recipe pie is about uh, 35 bucks the cable is about 10 bucks but of course you can use this for other stuff this is just for prototyping and uh, the temperature center is about five to six bucks something like that so in a second we can take a look at the code the python code that actually runs this whole thing okay so here we see another part of it as you can see here uh, this is called thinkspeak and uh, they call it the internet of things so what i do is i upload the temperature data in celsius here up to the internet and this website really visualizes it so I can watch live what's going on here and you see here I set 80 so it's always going up and then switches off and it goes back switches off and goes back so it's oscillating this is the cycle of on and off that the relay is switching on and off uh, the camera is focusing in and out a little bit that's too bad these uh, cell phone cameras are not that reliable then you see the CPU temp that's just a little bit of curiosity there what the CPU is doing and you see the same in uh, Fahrenheit so this doesn't show all the data I just show maybe uh, like 80 minutes of it and um, so let's take a look at the uh, code so I hope you can see this is a little small here and it's a little shaky so first I import a few things uh, the usual stuff and then I actually activate the, the one wire protocol W1 GPIO and W1 therm at which point uh, it automatically the system automatically creates uh, a file in the uh, sys directory with this ID here this is really cool so this is a unique ID that the temperature sensor has so you can actually uh, hook up several of them so in this case it's this one here 
and this is the temperature that I'm setting set the temp 80 I think this is a little blurry here um, if you're interested I can show the code uh, better this might not be so easily uh, readable okay then I set the mode on the GPIO port uh, basically on the board to BCM so this is the Brocom uh, numbering of the pins and then I set the um, GPIO 28 what is it 25 to out so it's an output port then I put a little signal handler here that's basically if in case I push control C and I interrupt it or I terminate the program it will automatically um, turn off the relay otherwise the relay is just gonna keep going so I have a little function here for uh, getting the temperature what it does is it goes to this path here this is really not as it's a little blurry here I don't know how to make this uh, in focus and it just grabs this file and then parses out the temperature out of it um, the get temperature that, that get, get CPU temperature is basically doing the same with the CPU and then basically um, post the thing on ThingSpeak and all this stuff is basically putting together a request here and sending this up and I have different fields one is for temperature, one is for CPU one is for fire, that means on and off and um, yeah it's just going in and out with the focus there's not much I can do unfortunately uh, this thing you can't even control the focus on this thing so and this is in Fahrenheit here and then the key this is like the ID I have on ThingSpeak this is really cool so you just take this code here you post it up and you automatically have it on the web it gets updated and everything then in the end let's take a look here I have this is basically the main loop so this runs forever while true is true and I also do here some writing to a file uh, to a text file that, that's what I initially had but I actually don't need that anymore so then we have you know if the temperature is lower uh, switch on the relay and set fire to one which is the thing you see on the on the other one there and then on here hold on one second. if the temperature is equal or larger switch it off obviously and then post it up to thinkspeak call that function with the parameters and then sleep 60 seconds and that's pretty much it and uh, let's go back here and that's how you see it then uh, here so this is really handy because otherwise if I would have to use a text file I would have to go and uh, import it first get it off the device you know import it into a program plot it and all that stuff and uh, this is really handy so let's take a look at what we cooked this is actually the first trial I ever did and I'm very confident that it's gonna be really nice all right, so now I'm ready to take this out. Just gonna remove this here. It looks a little like a nuclear reactor or something. <laughs> so I'll just uh, grab this and take it out. And uh, this is 80 degrees uh, hot, so it's like a 170 or 180 Fahrenheit. So it's a little dicey. And too hot to touch even so I have to figure out how to do that all right I got it out so this is a silicone bag here with some chicken and some uh, lemon and some herbs this has been in here for over three hours and uh, the cool thing about silicone is that it you can make it really hot you can make it really cold it doesn't react with food it's really safe and while you use plastic bags, um, with plastic bags you never know if there's gonna be uh, anything in it that might leach out like these softeners, you know, I usually call them BPA and such and um, it's really hard to know which ones do have them, which ones don't and I've heard that even the ones 
that they tell you that they don't have any they still have them so that's a little challenge but using silicone silicone is a really great material for that you know and uh, there's a lot of uh, foodwear and, and stuff they use with cooking made for it so I'll just take this out out of the bag and see how it looks so this is how it looks when you take it out and um, definitely a few things that I want to improve about it but uh, it's a good first test really successful yep the raspberry pot pie o -matic. <laughs>